if you follow the principles of judo, Jigoro Kano, what, what he said was mutual welfare and benefit, which means if you're a true judoka, the better you get, the more you know. It's your job to pass that on to other people. Mutual welfare, meaning I, being good, have to make you good and better. If I'm doing well, then all my students should be doing well, then all my friends should be doing well, not just in judo, but in life. My name is Anthony Kamau. I'm a sixth degree black belt in Kodokan Judo. I started Judo in 1967 in Manhattan. Me and my brothers were, uh, you know, it was a rough neighborhood in Manhattan. I grew up in Inwood Projects. We were always getting in scraps and my father uh, just thought that it was important for us to learn self-defense. My first instructor was Sensei Matsumura and uh, my whole family joined. We trained there for about three years and then the school closed and a guy named Cowan Swanson, who was from uh, Scotland, was a, a national team member, uh, and, then, and he was training with us also at that place, opened his own dojo, and my father followed him. And then my dad started training in uh, New City, New York, got his black belt, and once he got his black belt, he opened his own school. At that time, I got really sick. From when I was about seven, they didn't know what, what uh, asthma was. And they didn't really know how to treat it. They used to treat me with adrenaline, and shots, and I remember many a night my dad carried me to the hospital. Then around 12, I was hospitalized for a long time and I almost died from the asthma. I was very weak. When I was 12 years old, I weighed 68 pounds. When I came out, they told my father no exercise. At that point, he bought a shore house. The reason he did that, because he knew that swimming was a very important thing, and he started making me swim. By the end of that summer, I was swimming jetty to jetty, and it strengthened my lungs. What he told the doctors was, how is the kid going to develop his lungs? How is he going to get stronger without exercise? So he kind of went against what they said, and thank God. I started competing in judo when I was six. From six to 13, I never won a tournament. So seven years, but my family was very big into competing, and I just wasn't winning. But I had no choice. I still had to go in all the tournaments. I was still there, and they were making me fight. He never let me you know, not compete. Around 13, I hit puberty, and my body changed. You know, I kind of made a, a commitment to myself at that age. I was young, but I was like, my dad's not going to let me stop. So let me just try to get, get good at this. Uh, so 13, I finally, I'm in a tournament. I win a, two matches. I lose a match. I win another match. And the next thing you know, they tell me I'm fighting for third. I'm like, wow, I have a chance at a, a trophy. I took third in the, in the tournament and I realized I could win. I just had to believe I could win. And from that moment on, everything changed differently for me. If you lose for so long and you finally win at something, you know, that was my drug. I didn't have desires to like party and drink and, you know, I had desires to win, you know, because to me it was like, like one of the best feelings ever in my life was getting that third, stupid third place trophy, you know, at 13. Uh, I called my dad, I called him, I said, hey dad, I took third. And then I remember him saying, you know, what happened? I had to tell him, explain the match that I lost. And uh, he said, okay, when you come home, we'll talk. And then when we came home, he sat me down. He says, listen, he said, son, who was the first man on the moon? I said, Neil Armstrong. He said, who was the second? I said, I don't know. He said, no one remembers a second. He said, in this country, you have to be number one. So I go to the national championship. My father... He said, listen, you've been winning everything locally. I've been winning all the big tournaments, but the local tournaments, you know, and regional tournaments, ones we could drive to. And he says, you deserve to go to the Nationals. He says, but I can't afford to go with you. So me and another kid from New York, the father sent us both. I had my judo bag, my sweatsuit, my gi, a couple pair of clothes, and everybody was staying in Hilton. I stayed across the street because I had to stay in like a, a cheaper hotel. I was 16. With no coach, nothing. So I go to the national championships. Uh, everybody's got coaches, teams. Win my first one, win my second. Long story short, I, I'm beating all these kids from all over the country. The coach, people are like, who is this kid? Like, what's going on here? You know, I win seven, win seven matches. They tell me to come back for the finals at night. I wasn't shaken, I wasn't really rattled because I was really having a good day. But my father had kind of prepared me for that with his win. 
don't settle. You can beat them. So now I walk out for the finals. They call me out. And I'm standing across the map. I'm a brown belt. He's a black belt. And I'm looking across, and I knew in my heart I was going to beat this kid. Long story short, I went up throwing a kid free, pulling like three minutes into the match, and uh, I became national champion. And I called my dad, and I was like, Dad, I said, thank you. And he was like, why? He said, now I understand. Like, I understood why he had pushed me. I realized all of that pushing that he did made me who I was. And there's no one who's going to be a true champion, no one who's going to be really successful at a martial art, a fighting art, who likes to lose. And that's what he was trying to teach me. Because to be a national champion in anything, I don't care if it's badminton, you have to take yourself to that extreme. You have to emotionally, physically not accept loss, take the losses and learn from your losses. It doesn't matter who you, what you are, but try to be the best you can be at it. Always be the top. What judo did for me at that point, though, it taught me that I can use judo to help me in my life. The best thing in the Japanese code, and it comes to play in martial arts a lot, the best thing to do is to die in battle, right? So in judo, the best thing to do is to just give it all, but to give everything every time. If you do that in life, you're pretty much going to be pretty successful, because nine times out of ten, the average person in the United States is not going to do that.